Well, in addition to everything else, it's primary night in four different states, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Connecticut, and Vermont. And another unfolding story, DNC Vice Chair Keith Ellison leaving his House seat to run for Minnesota Attorney General. But that could be affected by recent allegations of domestic abuse. A lot going on in the political world, and who better to describe it to us than Fox chief political anchor and special report host, our friend Brett Baer. But thanks for uh, filling us in. What is going on with Keith Ellison exactly? Yeah, Tucker, this allegation of domestic abuse from a former girlfriend came out uh, in the final days of this campaign. He's denying the allegations, uh, but it is probably going to affect some votes there. We don't have any numbers yet out of Minnesota. The r amazing part of this story, though, is what you mentioned, and that is that he is the current deputy chair of the Democratic National Committee, and you really haven't seen this story many places. Uh, you haven't seen it picked up many places, and that really <laughs> is a, a, a big deal for not only Minnesota, uh, but also nationally on the Democratic Party. I want to touch on a couple of the things. One is, there are a lot of primaries that tonight could set the table for some big races come the fall. If you think about it, on the governors in New England, which is, as you know, a pretty progressive area, region, currently Republicans hold four out of the six states, the governor's office there in that region, and they could be five by the fall, because Connecticut, the current governor there, Dan Malloy, the Democrat, is very unpopular. The situation there with taxes is very unpopular. And tonight, Ned Lamont, who beat Senator Joe Lieberman 12 years ago, won the Democratic primary. Uh, and you have a host of candidates running against uh, for the Republican primary tonight. How that shapes up could be another Republican governor's uh, seat in New England come the fall. Kind of amazing is the region is becoming more left, but more Republicans elected governor. Amazing. Yeah. Brett Baer, great to see you. Thank you for that. See you, Tucker. We're out of time. Amazingly, the hour just slips by, sands through an hourglass like life itself. It's a deep and poignant moment for us every night when this show concludes. We'll be back tomorrow. The show that is the sworn enemy of lying, pomposity, smugness, and groupthink. DVR it if you have figured out how to do that. But above all, have a great evening. Last night, we came in a little long, as we say in the business, and stole about six seconds from our friend six, Sean exactly. Hannity. Tonight, we Five, want to give it four, back to him. Three. Sean Hannity, there he is. Well, I'm just a radio <laughs> guy, Tucker. So for me, hitting the post is like, it, it's important. You go 15 seconds long, 15 seconds Those short. Are, those seconds are my gifts juggling, to you. Listen, we love you. It, the show's great. That's all that matters. Thank you. All right, Tucker. And welcome to Hannity. Busy breaking news night again tonight. Day four of the mainstream media's Amorosa obsession. While the country is now facing so many serious issues, both home and abroad, the destroyed Trump press is running wall to wall with coverage of a fired White House staffer with an old grudge, a new book, and a lifetime of credibility issues. In moments, we'll expose the extent of the media's blatant anti-Trump bias. And we actually have time and numbers, and we'll compare it for you. And also tonight, well, the trial of the century is almost over. After 11 days, the tax and bank fraud case against Paul Manafort from 2005 is now ready for closing arguments. Hours ago, the defense rested in the case. Not a single witness called. We're going to explain why this is not necessarily good news for Team Mueller, whose sloppy prosecution tactics have frequently earned the ira ire of the federal judge overseeing this case. And meanwhile, a vast majority of you, the American people, you are telling Robert Mueller tonight, wrap it up. We'll show you the polls. We also have a new report raising serious questions about real Russia collusion tied exactly to the Clinton campaign. Robert Mueller, you and your team of merry Democratic donors, you may want to listen up tonight. All right, buckle up. Busy breaking news night. We're also following some election news as we begin with our breaking news opening monologue. All right, so much breaking news across the country, including multiple primaries in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Connecticut, and Vermont, along with ongoing congressional investigations into the deep state. We have huge, strong economic numbers to give you tonight and much more, but your mainstream media just can't get enough of Amarosa. For now, the fourth day across all platforms, your Destroy Trump media highlighting what is the salacious claims, untrue accusations, secret recordings from, yes, Amarosa, 
a person who was fired three times from a reality show, and by the way, once from the White House where she was hired by Donald Trump. And according to General Kelly, because of serious credibility and character issues, that's not brought, off very, brought up very often. And none of this seems to matter to the crisis peddlers seven days a week, 24 hours a day, minute by minute, hour by hour on so-called news networks. By the way, we're now on hour 72 plus of what is only or can only be described as the Amarosa reality show. Take a look. Breaking news in our politics lead in the ugly war of words between President Trump and Omarosa Manigault Newman. Omarosa Manigault Newman. Omarosa Manigault Newman. Omarosa Manigault Newman. You had a he said, she said between the President and Omarosa. 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 Guys, buckle up. Here is just part of my interview with Omarosa Manigault Newman. Omarosa Manigault Newman. Omarosa. 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 I don't think Omarosa was anywhere near any inner circle of the campaign. I have to admit, it's a little humorous, but this kind of obsessive anti-Trump coverage, it's nothing new. In fact, this echo chamber, it never stops. It just moves crisis to crisis, second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, 24-7, 365. We've got the evidence. Take a look. Now they will certainly face questions about Stormy Daniels. The Stormy saga takes a dramatic turn. Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels is lawyer. We haven't heard from him about the Stormy Daniels um, affair. Adult film star Stormy Daniels breaking her silence about her alleged affair with President Trump. We're talking, I think, understandably and appropriately uh, about the most serious legal allegations that Stormy Daniels made. Stormy Daniels. I am a proud holder. No. We are not all created equal, at least not if you are born in, as the president put it, a whole country. The word house instead of whole, as in house countries, not whole countries. I guess he's a holer. Is there a difference if the president said uh, whole or house? Do you think these countries are holes? Donald Trump has turned the Oval Office into a hole. Holers built this country 110 years ago. In addition to the president's whole comments yesterday, now, today is no different. The compulsive coverage just continues during the White House press briefing. And, of course, Secretary, Press Secretary Sarah Sanders responding to all of this. A pretty powerful rebuttal. Let's take a look. Unfortunately, the individuals in this room continue to create a large platform for somebody they know not to have a lot of credibility, for someone they frankly refused to give a, a platform to when they worked here at the White House. Uh, it wasn't until this individual started to negatively attack this president and this administration uh, and try to tear this uh, entire place down that she received the type of platform and rollout that she's getting. I think it would be great if every single person in this room uh, and every single person in the administration never had to talk about this again. And we actually got to focus on the real policies and the real things that not matter just to uh, people in this building, but certainly all Americans, African Americans, Hispanics, and everybody in between. I think that would be the best thing that we could certainly do for our country. And tonight, our friends at the Media Research Center, they're backing up what you just heard from Sarah Sanders. Their research shows that during their broadcast last night, the morning shows, Today, ABC, CBS, NBC, they dedicated approximately 344% more time covering Amarosa than they did covering the firing of FBI agent Peter Strzok. That's more than triple the reporting for salacious rumors over what is serious news about what is a corrupt, high-ranking FBI official fired because of his massive bias and corruption at the heart of everything from Hillary to General Flynn to the beginning of the Russia Trump hoax. And today, as he often does, the president bypassed the partisan press in the country. He took his message right to you, the American people. He tweeted out, quote, fired FBI agent Peter Strzok is a fraud, as is the rigged investigation that he started. There was no collusion or obstruction with Russia and everybody, including the Democrats, know it. The only collusion and obstruction was by crooked Hillary, the Democrats, the DNC. And tonight, a new report is now bolstering the president's claim. Real clear investigations. They're showing serious questions now being raised about Fusion GPS founder Glenn Simpson and the shadowy Russian figures who attended the now infamous 2016 Trump Tower meeting. By the way, Robert Mueller, if you're looking for potential Russia collusion, we've got more. It's all right here. And we all know Fusion GPS was employed by the DNC and the Clinton campaign. They paid them ultimately to dig up what ended up being Russian dirt on then-candidate Donald Trump. 
Tonight, there are new concerns over another client of Fusion GPS. Well, that's the Russian lawyer who attended that meeting that everyone's been talking about. She utilized Simpson's services to lobby against Russian sanctions. This plot just keeps thickening. And according to testimony, she had dinner with Simpson both before and after the Trump Tower meeting. Sounds like a setup to me. And because Simpson's relationship with that Kremlin-tied lawyer, a Chicago financier named William Browder, was, quote, so concerned about Fusion GPS's work on behalf of Russian interests that in July of 2016, he actually lodged a complaint with the DOJ. Let me put it simply. Clinton's op research firm, Fusion GPS, was working on behalf of the DNC, Hillary Clinton, and also Russian-backed interests. So, that's right, it's all literally represented by the same person, Glenn Simpson. Now, that's exactly as sketchy as it sounds. But where's the hysteria from the media? This is about stealing a presidential election, lying to the American people with phony Russian information that is paid for by the opposition party candidate and then used for a FISA warrant. Where's the special counsel investigation? Oh, it's not really an investigation into collusion now, is it? It's a partisan witch hunt against the president. And frankly, you, the American people, have seen through this and have had enough. Even fake news CNN has a poll that shows, that's right, two-thirds of you, the American people, are now calling for Robert Mueller to wrap this garbage up. And this comes as the trial of the century may soon be coming to an end. After 11 days, the defense rested in the bank and tax fraud case of Paul Manafort from 2005. They didn't bother calling a single witness. Manafort's legal team apparently believes that the special counsel did not meet their burden, the burden of proof. And they may be right. According to analysis from a Northern Virginia criminal defense attorney, T. Mueller was not ready for prime time in Judge Ellis's courtroom. Quote, no matter how strong their evidence, how righteous their cause, how impressive their resumes may be and actually are, they simply have not done a very good job. Well, clearly, Mueller has and was trying to turn the screws on Manafort, as Judge Ellis told us. He never wanted to go to trial. He just wanted Manafort to sing or to compose so that Mueller could give up something or make up something, anything, to then either prosecute or impeach Donald Trump. And despite Team Mueller's poor performance in court, sadly, for, Mo for Manafort, the odds are stacked against him. The vast majority of federal cases result in a guilty verdict, over 90%. This case, for the record, and maybe we'll get, even as early as Thursday of this week, a verdict. This case has nothing to do with collusion, nothing to do with Donald Trump, nothing to do with Russia, nothing to do with the election at all. Rod Rosenstein's mandate allowed this. And meanwhile, what do we have? Hillary Clinton committing multiple serious felonies, crimes, mishandling top secret information. She obstructed justice. When she deleted, of course, subpoenaed emails, washed uh, her hard drives with bleach bit, washed them away so they can never be found again, broke up her devices with hammers, fixed and rigged an investigation with Steele's dirty dossier. Remember, that was full of Russian lies, and it was peddled to you, the American people. Why? Because they wanted to misinform you to steal an election. That's called propaganda, misinformation, outright lying to the American people. And that information was then presented to four separate FISA court judges as, quote, credible evidence. Nobody had ever literally verified any of it, corroborated any of it. Nobody's been indicted, investigated by Team Mueller regarding Clinton's dirty Russian dossier. This is a disgrace to America's system of justice. And frankly, if we're going to be blunt and honest here, it is a clear and danger to our uh, clear and present danger to our constitutional republic. Now make no mistake, Manafort's found guilty, your media will have a brand new obsession. Stormy, 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 blank hole, blank hole, blank hole, Russia, 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 Russia. Oh, and then of course, Amorosa, Amorosa. And again, we'll be forced to call them out for their shameless, Christless peddling. Yeah, journalism in America is dead. But the real fear ought to be whether or not we have a justice system that applies equal justice under the law, equal application of our laws. This is really about Russia. Why are we dealing with a 2005 tax case not related to the campaign or Russia or Donald Trump at all? Why aren't we investigating the dirty dossier with Russian lies that were peddled to the American people? 
Why aren't we investigating FISA court judges that were absolutely a fraud was perpetrated on their courts with Russian lies? Uh, what about Adam Schiff, Shifty Schiff, and he's talking to Russians on the phone. We played it for you. And what does he want? Dirt on Donald Trump. And now we got Fusion GPS, Glenn Simpson meeting before and after with the client that met with Don Jr. and company at Trump Tower that the media's made so much of and also Russia's a client of his also? You got to be kidding me. You couldn't put this in a spy novel and have people believe this. Here now, Fox News contributor Sarah Carter, civil rights criminal defense attorney David Schoen. Uh, let's start with you, Sarah, and all these new developments. I think it's a big deal. We now have been, we have a lot of new information that's been coming out as it relates to Bruce Orr, Fusion GPS founder Glenn Simpson. Now we see that he had another client, and that was Russia, uh, a Russian client. And now we see that before and after the meeting at Trump Tower, he was meeting before and after with that client that was paying John. him. <laughs> yes. So here do you have people like James, you know, like John Brennan, James Clapper and others peddling complete and outright lies. These things have not been verified, saying that the Russians have information on Trump, that they can blackmail him, putting out this disinformation, not even misinformation, disinformation. And they're aiding Russia in this chaos. But on the other side, we have insurmountable evidence insurmountable evidence based on text messages phone records documents that you know people like natalia veselnitskaya who met at trump tower were working for prevazon holdings and guess who they hired they hired glenn simpson at fusion gps so she was connected directly to glenn simpson she met with him before and after just as you said there is direct links to these people and you know that is where the actual truth is uh Sean, these, this is the evidence that the people are not following and they need to be following. And this is the reason why Congress and why the senators have been so adamant of for calling a special counsel to investigate this. It is a complete injustice. And if you're looking at it on its face, we can see that there was actually a campaign to unseat a duly elected president. Explain and unfortunately, exactly. That, that, that's why the Amorosa obsession or the Stormy obsession or whatever. Exactly. The, or the, uh, blank hole obsession, whatever it is happens to be of the day. It's just, you know, crisis peddling, but ignoring the biggest abuse of power and an attempt to literally steal a, a presidential election. And by the way, everyone seems to not care that we know the fix was in. Bernie never had a shot in the primary. Nobody ever seems to talk about that anymore. Uh, if I was a Democrat and I voted for Bernie or I wanted Bernie to win, I'd be pretty pissed off. Uh, oh, Sean, I I've spoken to a number of Democrats that are very angry about that, and, and no they know the election was stolen. That's this right. This is the United That's States right. of America still, the last time I checked. All right, we're going to be bouncing back and forth. I want to ask you about Bruce Zorn next, Sarah, but first I want to bring David into this. David, look, you, you've tried a lot of criminal cases here. Um, I've used the example of Sammy the Bull Gravano. Sammy the Bull kills 19 people, but he gets a get-out-of-jail-free card if he testifies against person X, Y, or Z, and I'm thinking, okay, if I killed 19 people, I don't want to spend the rest of my life in jail. I kill people. It's not exactly like I have a moral compass at all. I'd say whatever you want me to say. Now, the main, the, the lead prosecution witness in the Manafort case is his partner, Rick Gates. He's admitted liar, embezzler, cheat, um, involved in everything that supposedly Paul Manafort has done for the most part. He is their star witness who was facing 100 years in jail and everybody else that testified got immunity. That sounds to me like, well, Mueller is basically bribing Rick Gates with a get out of jail free card. And frankly, I can't put any faith or credibility in anybody that gets off 100 years in jail, potentially. Right. You, you've hit the nail on the head. This is the currency in which people like Andrew Weissman and Greg Andres, two lead prosecutors in the Manafort case, for example, have dealt their entire careers. They decide who should be telling the truth in the case. And if the story doesn't match from the informant that they would like it to be, they get rid of that person. They deep six them. If they're willing to play ball and say what Weissman and Andres and those sort of prosecutors want them to say, then they can play ball. But it's the defense lawyer's job to expose that to the jury. So the jurors should 
should be as offended as you've indicated you are that a person who commits 19 murders, or in this case, white collar well, maybe crimes. Maybe it comes now, down remember. to the numbers in the accounting. I don't know. 95% of federal cases end up in guilty verdicts. So the odds are with Mueller. Well, that's right. Because but they, remember, the government has all of the resources. You take a white-collar defendant who's never known anyone who spent a day in jail, and you put before him or her the prospect of going to jail or having a family member go to jail, and people like Weissman and Andres turn the screws to those family members. They plead guilty whether they're guilty or not. The American public may not believe that. It happens every day in but our justice system. But he got a complete get-out-of-jail-free card, and he was facing at least 100 years in jail. I can't put any credibility in what he says. He's an admitted embezzler. You gave the example, He's an, you gave the example of Sammy the Bull. Those are murders. He was out on the street. Time served. Unbelievable. All right, let me go back again. We're bouncing back and forth. Let's go to the Bruce Orr issue. And because Bruce Orr is so connected to the news tonight about Fusion GPS, having a Russian client meeting both before and after the Trump Tower meeting, you know, the, the plot thickens every single day, and it literally is Russia, 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 but it's not what Mueller's doing, Sarah Carter. Yeah, so, yeah, Mueller is not investigating all of these Russian connections with these players that were involved in trying to entrap President Trump or people within his campaign. They're, they're continuing this saga, and they haven't shown us any proof that there was any guilt of collusion with the Russians with the campaign. But let's just go to Bruce Orr. We know that Bruce Orr was in communication with Christopher Steele, a former foreign British spy who was basically peddling Russian disinformation in into the FBI. Now, when the FBI realized that Christopher Steele was lying to them, that he had been meeting with the media and actually peddling that information for Glenn Simpson, who, remember, also worked for the Russians, to American media, the FBI fired him. But they wanted to continue propagating these lies. So Peter Strzok and the others who were in charge of these investigations went around Christopher Steele. They used Bruce Orr as a back channel. And his wife, Nellie Orr, just happened to be working for who? Glenn Simpson with Fusion GPS. Sean, there cannot be any more connect the dots than what we are seeing. And it's so unfortunate that we do not have a meetings, special... By the way, 60 meetings between Steele and Orr 70. at least. 70. 70 at least. That is what I was told today. 70 at least. Now that they've counted all of the Skype messaging back and forth. And remember, they were using it as a back channel. But what did they fail to do? The government failed, the FBI failed, and the DOJ to put that in the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court application that they issued on Carter Page. How is it le legally possible, David, that you've got all of this Russian evidence here on the other side, and they ignore it, and they go after a 2005 tax case? It has nothing to do with the election, Russia, the president, nothing. How did that mandate spread so wide by the guy that signed the fourth uh, FISA warrant, which is Rob Rosenstein, which is so conflicting? It, it, it's shocking. It's shocking. Look, let me, let me just say, also in listening in here, you have all of the facts. No one else has spoke about Bruce Orr before you did. Sarah Carter is better than any special counsel could be in this case. The American people have to listen to these facts. You started these stories and you're following through. This is vitally important. How could it have happened? It's an abomination. This is the FISA court, the most uh, uh, secret court A fraud. in the country. A fraud was it's, committed it's, it's on the court. Absolutely dangerous. Well, Every that, American citizen did it, is in danger. Uh, I don't even think you could get me out of jail. Um, all right, thank you. Uh, a close confidant of the Clintons agrees with me on most of this. We'll tell you about that. Ed Henry, an explosive report involving a prominent Democrat. Allegations of abuse. Then, find out which member of the Detroit Trump media is the latest to freak out over Peter Strzok's firing. We've got that and Jesse and Jessica and so much more. Straight ahead. We have more big breaking news tonight involving the deputy chairman of the DNC, that's Congressman Keith Ellison, and explosive allegations of abuse. Fox News Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry, he joins us with, from Washington with the very latest details. Ed. 
Sean, this is not just a backbench congressman. Keith Ellison serves as deputy chair of the Democratic National Committee. So he's a leader in the party and was supposed to be a rising star on the left because he's the first Muslim American elected to Congress. But Ellison abruptly left the campaign trail because of these allegations of abuse lodged in the run-up to today's primary in Minnesota, where he's the frontrunner among five Democrats running for state attorney general. Over the weekend, the son of his ex-girlfriend, Karen Monahan, accused Ellison of abusing his mother and claims there's video evidence, though Monahan herself told Minnesota Public Radio why she does not intend to release that video. It's not on me to try to keep proving to people this happened. When I originally was going to share my story, I had no intention of talking about video or text. It was simple as me sharing what happened to me. Ellison put out a statement Sunday night saying, quote, Karen and I were in a long-term relationship which ended in 2016, and I still care deeply for her well-being. This video does not exist because I never behaved in this way, and any characterization otherwise is false. Now, analysts in the state have said one thing Ellison may have going for him politically is some people participated in early voting before these allegations, though if he gets the primary nod tonight, this could still dog him in the general election. Sean? All right. Thanks, Ed. And be sure Ed is in tonight, 11 o'clock, filling in for Shannon Breen, Fox News at night. But first, NBC News, Chucky e. Todd. He's not happy that the FBI fired Trump-hating agent Peter Strzok. And he tweeted out today, I don't know if folks realize how extraordinary and undemocratic small d it is for the president of the United States to run down a civil servant like this. And, you know, for legal folks, when does this become an intimidation tactic? to the point of legal obstruction. And I wonder if other civil servants who believe they have seen wrongdoing are watching how the POTUS and his echo chamber can character assassinate so viciously and get second thoughts about doing their job given the risk the POTUS is showcasing to anyone who crosses him. By the way, has Chucky e. Todd ever bothered to read the text messages? Well, stop him, insurance policy, all the other stuff? Or is he just really that dumb? And by the way, Chucky, you may host Meet the Press. You will never be Tim Russert. Here now with reaction is the New York Times bestselling author, The Russian Hoax, The Illicit Scheme to Clear Hillary Clinton, Frame Donald Trump. Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett, former Clinton pollster, advisor Mark Penn. You know, Mark, you were how many years for the Clintons? Thirteen. How many? Thirteen. And you were Clinton's pollster. You were close to the Clintons. Well, pollster, chief strategist through the presidential campaign, through impeachment, through Hillary's Senate race in 2008. Okay, you're one of the few Democrats, and I'm sure you've probably even taken heat for talking to me, which, by the way, I apologize for. Um, but you're one of the few Democrats that see through this, see the danger in all of this. What do you say to your fellow Democrats that are literally watching a dual justice system emerge before their eyes and not seemingly caring. Look, I say the facts that have been uncovered here, from the Peter Strzok text to the actions that were taken by the FBI, to the conflicts of interest, to the wife that worked for, for GPS Simpson, that these are real facts. These are not theories. The, when it at least comes to this issue, the tin hats are not being worn by the people on Fox News. They're being worn by the FBI. And what seems to be, what, five, six, seven people now who've had to step down or resign. This is not smoke. This is real fire. And I think that whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, you have to recognize that this was wrong and it's tearing apart our country. What, but there is, the, the, the irony in all this is we're talking about the Manafort trial. 2005 tax fraud case. I didn't know Paul Manafort. I don't know what he did in 2005. But this was all because of Rod Rosenstein's wide mandate that he gave Robert Mueller and the appointment of his friend. And even though he signed the, FISA, the fourth FISA warrant, which I believe conflicts him, just like, you know, recommending the firing of Comey. But I, but I look at, for example, Hillary's campaign paying for what turned out to be Russian lies. Misinformation peddled to the American people before an election. I look at what happened to Bernie Sanders. I look at FISA court judges, a fraud committed four separate times on a court with unverified, uncorroborated information and purposely withholding the information that Hillary paid for it. And you're right, these are all facts. This all has a little bit to do with Russia and Russian lies. And 
That is all being ignored, just like Adam Schiff talking to a Russian about naked pictures of Donald Trump, breathlessly hoping for all the details. Well, look, Judge Ellis said it pretty well. Why is Paul Manafort being prosecuted? He's being prosecuted because he worked for a couple of months as campaign manager for Donald Trump. Otherwise, maybe the IRS would have done an investigation. Maybe he case would have been prosecuted. Closed. But if the case was closed, this was picked up for that very reason. So ultimately, I think he did a risky strategy today, not calling witnesses. But is it a persecution or a prosecution? What I is think it? that's Answer how they're going to have to put the case What do you think it win. is? Well, you know, it's one half of each. I think that Manafort has a lot of explaining to do about these transactions, but he not, would never have the entire force of the U.S. government held without bail with two indictments in two separate courts unless he had worked in a political campaign. And that's what's wrong about it. And Mark Penn, with all due respect to your relationship with Hillary, if you deleted email, uh, subpoenaed emails, if you acid wash your hard drive with bleach pit, which nobody had ever heard of, you had AIDS bust up your devices. Um, I don't think you'd be sitting here tonight. You'd probably be in jail. Well, look, I, I think that there, there was a valid request for this information, and it, it, never, it never showed up. And as you know, and as, as I'm sure Greg Carrick could tell us in even more detail, the, the guy who was supposed to maintain it deliberately destroyed the emails after he knew that it was under subpoena. So there was no question that a lot of people destroyed information, but no one has been held accountable for it. I don't think it was Hillary per se, but somebody destroyed a lot of information here. Uh, let me go to Greg Jarrett. Greg, there is a lot of Russian angles in this that are not being investigated. Fraud committed upon a court. I believe a rigged investigation, exoneration before the investigation. Uh, I believe that the fix was in, and I believe that they have turned the entire force of the, of the DOJ and the FBI, the upper echelon, right. against Donald Trump before the election and now after the election. There, there's a reason why James Comey took the case away from the field office because Comey knew that the FBI is incorruptible but Comey was corrupt and so he seized the case the Hillary Clinton case away from the field office because he likely knew that they would find uh, that she committed multiple crimes and would have recommended prosecution and indictment and Comey took it over and he twisted the law and contorted the facts and he cleared her in the face of overwhelming evidence of criminality. I talked today at length to a former top FBI official, 30 years in the business, and he talks all the time to the rank and file and he says they are fuming at what James Comey and Peter Strzok did. I, I, they caused uh, irreparable harm that will take years to rectify. One of the things an FBI agent told me is that for him, that he feels it and sees it, that the trust in that great agency is diminished because of the actions of those few at the top. Let me, let me ask you this. Now that Strzok is fired, and he's at the heart of everything, he's the one that changed the language, gross negligence, right. extreme carelessness. He's the one that interviewed Hillary. He wrote the exoneration before investigation. He's involved with Flynn. Sure. He interviewed Hillary Flynn and started the Russia investigation. How does that taint, in your view, everything that now Robert Mueller is trying to do. Well, uh, if he gathered evidence uh, that contributed to Mueller's case, any case against Donald Trump, that's tainted evidence. And under the exclusionary rule, it cannot and should not be used. Be used. You know, Peter Strzok deserved to be fired 10 times over. I looked up the code of regulations, the code of conduct. He violated at least four different uh, code of conduct at the FBI, he richly deserved to have been fired, and the president is entitled to exercise his constitutionally protected speech to criticize and condemn Peter yeah. Strzok, and all Frank Americans Gary famously should. said, if you're innocent, act like it. If right. I'm innocent, I'm going to scream my innocence pretty loudly. We'll give Mark the last word tonight. Mark. Well, look, I think there's no question. Peter Strzok use government communications for personal purposes and personal communications for government purposes and then he was filled with animus and hatred while supposedly conducting an impartial investigation yes he should have been fired a long time ago and the american people know that 
All right. I feel sorry for you as you go out to your favorite restaurant in D.C. the next time, Mark Penn. You'll be explaining your appearance on the show. Uh, but thank you for your honesty. We appreciate it. When thank we you. come back, we have brand new polling tonight highlighting just how extreme the Democratic Party is 84 days out of the election, the midterms, the most important in our life. Jesse, Jessica, whose world? Next. All right, so over the weekend, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi was asked what the Democrats stand for. Here's what she said. What are Democrats for? Democrats are for the people. Uh, for what does that mean? Democrats exactly? are for the people. It means we are for the people having lower health care costs, reducing the cost of prescription drugs. Democrats are for bigger paychecks by building the infrastructure of America, creating good paying jobs. Again, Democrats are for making government work uh, by reducing the role of big dark money in politics. Bigger paychecks by taking back the crumbs and keeping the disastrous plan known as Obamacare. And of course, impeaching the president, but don't tell anyone. Oh, and eliminating ICE and open borders. And now a new poll shows uh, from Gallup, Democrats view socialism more positively than capitalism. Joining us now is the co-host of The Five and the host of Waters World. He actually has two shows, Jesse <laughs> Water. One isn't enough. And Fox News contributor Jessica Tarlow, but why doesn't she have one show? That's not fair. If you're out there watching, answer that question. I would have the highest viewership on the network. You <laughs> Just know, kidding, you still would. This is a really important issue, because I've given the statistics eight years of Obama. I won't give them all now. 13 million more Americans, Thank food you. stamps, 8 million more poverty, more debt than every other president before him combined. Can but I do mine? The impeach Trump but don't tell people is true. We know they want their crumbs back. They said they're crumbs, but they want them back. We know they want Obamacare. They, she said it. Mm -hmm. And we know they want open borders and to eliminate ICE. Um, what else do they stand for? Well, oh, you're asking me. So they don't stand for abolishing ICE or open borders. Those are some things that people on the fringe left are saying. And that is not, not true. But yes, it ahead. is true. Of course. Of course no, it is not. true. Have you seen a Democratic Party platform piece that says we would love open borders and to abolish I'm ICE? I'm listening no, to our Democrats leadership. all over the country talk about eliminating ICE. Yeah. 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 Keith Ellison, the number two of the DNC, had a t-shirt on that said we don't believe in borders. I think that stands for something. But what do the Democrats stand for, Sean? We know they don't stand for the national anthem. I mean, are they against <laughs> rising wages, rising stock market? What have the Democrats given us besides ISIS, Chinese spies, open borders? What are they going to run on? Bringing back Obamacare? They Bringing already invest, lost a midterm election. Bringing elections for Bernie, but right? You know, lies about That's, lies from Russia to true. lie to the American people and propagandize them before the general election. But it, but it's not true. First of all, it's Bernie all true. Sanders lost by over four million votes. That was not rigged against him because of the DNC. That was because he was a less popular choice than Hillary Clinton. Then Fact. why did the DNC chairwoman resign in disgrace right before the convention? Oh, because you, you think that she stole four million votes and ran out the door there? Yeah, Debbie no, Wasserman I think the Schull email got, showed that she rigged it, so you, she had to get out of town. You can't rig four million votes. And with you just can't do it, and it wasn't what happened. If you look at what's going on in these primaries all over the country right now, the establishment Democrat candidates are beating the progressive left candidates endorsed by Bernie and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez because that's not what our party why, is why about. Do, why does the poll show that Democrats, uh, Jesse, support socialism over capitalism? Well, listen, I mean, they support socialism because liberalism has failed. They're out of touch. They're out of power. They're out of ideas. But I have an idea. Why don't they work with the president to make America great again? You know, they, Democrats feel like they have to exist in order to resist. I think if they got together and did a deal with the president, they'd get something done for the American people. I mean, socialism... A simple question I have for both of you. Yeah. Jessica, since mm -hmm. Donald Trump's been president, we have 14 states record low unemployment, record low unemployment for African Americans, women in the workforce, Asian Americans, Hispanic Americans. Is that Donald Trump's good economic policies? Can you admit it? You made me do this last week, and the Daily Caller then had an absurd headline that didn't include what I actually said, which was, thank you, Donald Trump, but thank you, Barack Obama, more. Donald Trump inherited <laughs> conditions that allowed him to pull this off. He is doing better with those groups, though. I mean, right, who knows where that goes from there. Right. And eight Sarah years of failure, and now we'll, we'll give him the, the success of Trump. GDP versus 1.6, I'd take that any day. Yeah. Barack Obama had four quarters over 4% growth of GDP. We will see what President Trump does, but we should be thankful for the crumbs. We should be thankful for any economic All right, growth. I'm ready. Oh. <laughs> 
Jesse. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's his world. You're living in it. So All right, true. good to see you both. <laughs> Thank Trace you. Gallagher, shocking new developments tonight about the extremist Muslim compound. Remember in New Mexico, young boy found dead, other children literally trained to carry out school shootings. Oh, guess what? They got out of jail. Well, on a $20,000 bond. Sebastian Gorka, Dan Bongino, and much more straight ahead. Following a disturbing story out of New Mexico where it has now been reported that children were being trained to conduct school shootings at a squalid compound. Our own Trace Gallagher has the very latest on this troubling story. Trace. Sean, we're talking about 11 children ages 1 to 15 and 5 adults facing child abuse charges, but Judge Sarah Back has decided not to hold the adults. So not only has she come under fire on social media, tonight authorities in Taos, New Mexico had to evacuate the courthouse because of a credible threat against her. In court, prosecutors said the adults at the compound were teaching children how to shoot teachers, cops, and students, and the FBI testified the children were forced to attend an exorcism to expel the demon demons from a three-year-old boy with epilepsy. Witnesses say the boy's father refused to give his son medication, and when the boy died of a seizure, the father said his son would come back as Jesus and tell them who to kill. The defense says this is nothing more than a religious journey, and prosecutors are applying a double standard because the defendants are Muslim or black. Judge Backus, a Democrat and former San Francisco public defender, said the allegations are troubling, but that prosecutors did not prove the suspect had a plan to kill anyone. She then freed the defendants on a signature bond that requires no money up front. But we should note tonight the female leader of this group was picked up by U.S. agents for an immigration violation. Sean. All right, Trace, insane, but sadly happening. Here with reaction tonight to this and more, the author of Why We Fight, Fox News national security strategist Dr. Sebastian Gorka, former Secret Service agent, NRA TV contributor Dan Bongino. I look at this, the judge ruling that prosecutors in the case, five adults, etc., in the compound, 11 malnourished children, that they failed to make the case for keeping the defendants in custody while they wait trial. Paul Manafort, didn't he spend... Dr. Gorka, 23 hours uh, a day in solitary confinement for a long yes. period of time over our 2005 tax case. Here we have evidence of these kids, what were the conditions they were living in, what specifically happened here. It's truly remarkable. This is perhaps the most horrific case study of just how politicized the judicial system has become in recent years. Uh, you need to listen to what Trace said again. These were children, almost a dozen children, and they found the dead body of a four-year-old on the compound. They found the weapons, they ha found the training materials, and these people are left to leave the courtroom without paying a bail and I think the best they did is to give them uh, ankle bracelet trackers. This, this isn't justice, this is where political correctness can get in the way of keeping Americans safe, Sean. It's a travesty. Well, the judge, t you know, saying prosecutors, to, prosecutors didn't prove, Dan Bongino, that the terrorists were a danger to the community. It's only really a signature bond, meaning they only need a signature, they don't even have to post the 20 grand. Sean, I've never heard anything like this. When I was a Secret Service agent investigating financial crimes, keep in mind, we're talking about white-collar crimes, not the allegations here where kids were being trained to shoot law enforcement and teachers on a compound. When I was doing white-collar crimes, I remember bond rates in the Eastern District of New York in the Long Island Courthouse 10 and 20 times this for people who committed credit card fraud, check kiting, and bank fraud. This case is outrageous. By the way, Sean, the allegations in this, they don't have to prove any. They prove it in the trial. There was clearly probable right. cause for an arrest or they wouldn't have been in a courtroom. These are serious me, allegations. This is an embarrassment to the justice system. Let me shift gears and let's talk a little bit about the Manafort case. So the odds are not with Paul Manafort based on, you know, the conviction rate in, in federal court is 95 plus percent. Um, and none of us know what he did in 2005. But we do know that the lead witness got a get out of jail free card, Dr. Gorka, and that he's all, he faced 100 years plus in jail. Admitted somebody yeah. that 
was an admitted liar, you know, admitted to, you know, all these other crimes. Is that bribery of a witness? Doesn't it seem like it to you? Doesn't it seem like it's just something wrong with that system? Well, that, that's an old established system to try and uh, get people who are criminals to give you access and ammunition against the person you really want. And Sean, there's only one person that Mueller and his team really want, and that's the president. And they yeah. think they can get to the president through Manafort, and that's why they flip this individual who has zero credibility. And, and again, uh, it's about politics. Uh, this is in Virginia, but Arlington is a very, very Democrat core district. Then a hundred years in jail, and then you get a get out of jail free card, and you know, admitting to embezzling, lying, and all sorts of other crap. I'd say anything. I would assume that person would say anything. Yeah, I think it's clear, you know, the crime they're really looking at for Manafort, it was joining the Trump team. I mean, that seems obvious, but yeah, Sebastian's right. This, uh, and you're right, this witness is not credible. He has problems with his family, his finances, and everything else. And ultimately, it's going right. to come down to his believability by the jury, which uh, I don't believe is very good. Thank you both. You're going to love our video of the day. Story involving a patriotic 10-year-old boy. It'll blow your mind. That's next.